The Equine Dental Clinic in the south of England is Europe's first and largest specialist veterinary practice dedicated to equine dentistry. Chris Pierce is the founder and along with a team of expert animal doctors and nurses, treats horses who are in need of care and attention. We are primarily a referral practice. So we deal with all the difficult cases, surgical cases, extractions of teeth, fillings, endodontics, all the most advanced subjects within equine dentistry that other vets really can't or haven't got the training or don't want in a lot of cases to become involved with. We've really tried to make it as much like a human dentistry experience as possible because horses are living longer, their teeth all have pretty much the same diseases. There's some very significant differences, of course, between human teeth and equine teeth. But the essence of having a high standard veterinary dentistry clinic is we want to use all the technologies available to give the horses the best chance of keeping their teeth for as long as they can. We have little Dartmoor ponies that we had in today. We have Olympic horses, five-star eventers, literally the whole spectrum. And for the client, it doesn't matter the value of the horse. It doesn't matter how high it can jump in a lot of cases or anything. You know, they're just family members, you know. Horses' teeth, like any animal's teeth, are really important to their general overall health. And it's only in the last 25 years that the veterinary world have taken it on and, and thought about it more as in human dentistry. But it's important for their overall health, not only for the eating, but especially when people are doing competition horses, riding. Um, it's really important that the horses are comfortable in their mouth. And obviously the teeth are very closely interlinked with the sinuses and with the mandible, the jaw. So any kind of disease or infection of the teeth could cause other infections which can be more serious and require more protracted treatments and complicated treatments. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what his mouth looks like by using the camera linked up to the um, video system. You can see his mouth and I'm going to take a little recording. It does look like there's a sort of a cavity here. The clients are always just so grateful when we show them what's going on in the horse's mouth and we explain the process of how the horse got to the point it did and why the teeth are so bad. And visualization for the clients is so important. We love to have them in the room. I love to get them looking at the TV screens where we have all the imaging. And so they can become really involved in the whole process. And then they're, they're always really keen to, to, to do anything that we suggest. So that's really nice. You know, it makes the job really worthwhile. And that means that tooth is probably dead. So this is Tilly and she is 19 years old and she has no problems eating. Um, and we're just busy looking at her upper teeth. And the only thing we can really see with the upper teeth, she's got a little bit of peripheral tooth decay. Um, but that is more from a problem that she's got on the bottom. So we kind of see peripheral tooth decay in horses if they've got food packing somewhere and they've got fermentation and decay. So when I turn around and look at her <laughs> bottom teeth, you can straight away see the problem that she has gaps in between her teeth called diastomas and these cause obviously food packing and severe gum disease. She even has a big kind of stick in there between the two. Um, and it's amazing that she's eating as well as she is. And they do like to have a nibble at the hedge, don't they? And there's nothing we can do about that. Even here, she's got quite stalky bits. Yeah, poor girl. Horses do feel pain, absolutely 100%. They have exactly the same nerve structure to their head and to the rest of the body, to the brain. And those nerve fibers infiltrate the teeth into, into every part of the tooth, pretty much. What they're very good at, however, because they are prey animals, is that they're very good at concealing the pain because out in the wild, as a herd animal, if they start to display that they have pain, they will become a target from a predator. And 50 million years of evolution has meant they've become very stoic, they become very adaptable to their pain, and they find ways of concealing it. And many horses, when they have got low-grade pain and they're coping, they will be showing very subtle signs of that. They might be bad-tempered, they might be a little bit aggressive to other herd members, they might have some very low-grade performance problems. And one of the great things about the research that's been taking place in the last five to ten years is that we've really been appreciating and 
finding through research that horses in low-grade pain do show symptoms, it's just that we haven't really learned how to recognise them. So we have a CT scanner in our clinic and the reason why we wanted to get the CT scanner is because horses' heads are obviously very large, complex structures and radiographs of horses' head is quite limited with what you can see and what you can find. So this is a CT image of the horse we scanned earlier and as you can see it gives us a very nice little three-dimensional pictures which we can manipulate. So in this case um, we were particularly interested in a lower tooth that we thought might be infected and when we looked at the CT images, like I said, we create our three-dimensional pictures and this is the picture that kind of the image that gave us the best that we can actually see that there's a bit more of a black line around that tooth and a bit of bone thickening which really confirmed to us that we had inflammation and infection around this tooth. Okay, so we have extracted this tooth now, that's the tooth that we've taken out. It's a very diseased tooth, um, not a happy tooth at all. Came out very nicely using a technique using a reverse fulcrum which helps to lever it off the tooth behind. And now I'm examining the socket just to check uh, that there's not an existing what we call fistula which is a communication from the socket into the nose. And it looks absolutely fine, it's nice and clean and it's, and it's very solid. Misty's slowly waking up. Um, it's a relief to know that everything's improving in her mouth. Um, it's a bit of a worry when they first found all the diastomas. Um, and then for Nicole to say that everything's going well, everything's going in the right direction, which is fab. So yeah, it's really positive. Oh, I think they're absolutely fantastic. Everyone's really friendly. While she's having the procedure, they explain exactly what they're doing. Um, I'm allowed to go and have a look in our mouth and see what they're doing. Um, it's really educational and like I said, everyone's really lovely here. Horses' teeth have undulations or transverse ridges and they all kind of interlock when they eat to increase the surface area. And each tooth, as I said before, each tooth has to erupt and it has to wear down against an opposite number. So the rasping is something that just has to be done every six to 12 months on average because of this fact that the horse's teeth continually erupt and continually wear each other down. But unfortunately it doesn't happen in a perfectly even situation as it would do in a perfect world. And it's quite important to get everything in balance to make sure that the mastication is even from one side to the other, that the mouth is symmetrical, especially when horses are being ridden. We want them to be symmetrical and comfortable and happy and not in any pain. So pleased, I am so impressed. It looks absolutely amazing now, the difference. And hopefully, after a couple of weeks, the pony will be in a lot more comfort. They are incredibly <laughs> inclusive. They have literally let us be in on every single part of it. And we saw things that we would never normally see. So it's, it's a very informative, very interesting, and the technology is amazing. If we had a, a specific aim in the work that we do, it's to educate and educate and educate. Because every day, still, despite all the teaching and all the education that we've done to date, we still see cases which really should have had much better quality dentistry throughout their whole life. So there's still a message to get across. It's still a welfare issue, in, and not just in the UK, but all over the world. And so we just, we just need to keep going, and that, that, that's what keeps me going. <laughs>